What's up guys, this is Skadoosh for Cardrunners.com. This is the second part of my free rebuy 180 hand history review of a student of mine, Matt242. Now in the first part I alluded to some adjustments I wanted Matt to be making when moving up. And I've spoken about those briefly in the first part, but I just wanted to go into those in a little more detail now. So firstly, our ranges are going to have to be a little more balanced in these three rebuys. Now I don't mean balanced in the poker theory sense, I just mean kind of weighted towards a raise call or a raise fold range and so it's not wildly imbalanced so in some spots you're not just raise calling with aces and then raise folding with the whole rest of your range so it's just not completely obvious what you're doing. Now in the 250s you can be very active throughout the whole tournament, you can be stealing a lot even if you're kind of a mid stack on the final table and you can still a lot of the time steal off a lot of the big stacks because they're not going to be putting any ICM pressure on you there. Now in these three rebuys people have started uh, definitely more aware of ICM and definitely more aggressive so like I said before you do want to have a fairly balanced raise call, raise call and raise fold range. So that's probably the main, the main thing I want to be working on when you first move up and also Obviously, three rebuys are playing a little bit deeper, so we want to be finding quite a lot of three bet spots where we can take advantage of the people that are open in two light. And also, as we're deeper, we are also going to be flatting a little bit more out of the big blind and such when we get given really good odds. Just because of how often someone might be min raising from late position with such a wide range, and a lot of the times the regs will be over C betting as well. So it just becomes a very good play to flat with your kind of around 15 and under big blind stack and check shove a lot of flops so let's have a look at some more hands okay so we get dealt king king here now again like we talked about before even though some of the stacks are pretty short here we still have a fairly aggro big blind here so we're just going to be raise calling obviously to the big blind and with king king we're obviously pretty happy to get flat here and then a pretty standard get in spot there so now we have a really good stack here I'm looking I wanted to see Matt open up his game now here we're going to be folding just because of Dreddy in the on the button here he's just too short to be raise folding to here So again we have the same situation there. But with this stack, on this sort of stage in the tournament, I'm happy for Matt to be open in these hands if the, situ if the scenario fits. So we're definitely going to be raising here, which is good by Matt. And then as you can see we get instant folds again. So again now we get shorthanded, we really want to make the most of our stack at this table. Now we do have one guy with a bigger stack, so we need to be a little bit careful. But also, if this reg isn't really really good or aggressive, then we can be 3 betting quite a lot as we're both quite deep. So we want to maybe be targeting them a little bit to 3 bets and see how that is working for us. So here I think would be a spot I'd definitely be opening, just because it's worked out pretty well at the table. We can happily raise fold to everyone, and I don't think we're going to get flat too often. Everyone seems to be having a fairly close VPIP and preflop raise, so I do quite like opening here. And as I said before, we want to keep really active, especially when it's short-handed. I think what a lot of people will make the mistake of doing is playing overly tight in these situations. And then they fold down to like a 10 big blind stack or something by the final table. And then their ROI is much lower because they're not entering the final table with the chip lead. Where they can really open up their game and just kind of dominate the table. And then that's going to in turn mean a lot more first and top three place finishes. Rather than kind of laddering and ending up getting fifth or fourth by push folding. So I'd definitely be opening there. <laughs> 